Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you all. And here uh, till 4 o'clock, which is, I think, a great achievement, right? Listening from the morning. So yeah, hopefully I won't bore you all uh, with my talk. And uh, I will try to make it uh, more lively with uh, the demo so that uh, you all have like uh, some interaction and feel free to ask questions. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. I am Sini, and I am working on a machine config operator uh, project, which is part of OpenShift. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm in Red Hat. And uh, today, I will be talking about OpenShift OS customization as a bootable container. Um, so you might be wondering what, I, what exactly this is, uh, but uh, probably you might have guessed a little bit what is OpenShift OS. So yeah, uh, so here we'll be talking about uh, where exactly this whole OpenShift 4 run, right? So, and you need an OS. And uh, so I think probably, how many of you know like uh, what OS will run on OpenShift 4? Awesome. C can you tell? Yes, uh, CoreOS, and uh, it's uh, formally called Rel, Rel CoreOS because uh, this is derived from Rel, and uh, CoreOS because uh, it's, it, it's, it is based on the CoreOS technology, which in, internally uses RPM OS3 OS3, and uh, we have upstream version of uh, this operating system as Silver Blue and uh, Fedora CoreOS, and uh, yeah, and probably many more in future, Kinoite as well. Uh, which is KDE edition, um, yeah. Uh, so for here, uh, our, our, our talk interest is more for REL core OS. Uh, that's run as part of OpenShift 4, and uh, this is image-based because it's based on RPM OS3 and OS3 technology. And uh, so for, for OpenShift 4, uh, when we made it, it was opinionated, and uh, uh, we didn't want to use this to really interact and go and search into machine and uh, do config changes. Uh, we wanted to make it secure and uh, like uh, so that we can have everything being updated automatically, uh, including the operating system itself. And that's why it was more like do, uh, don't do SSH and uh, do manual changes. Uh, use something, and that's where MCO comes into picture. MCO is what, uh, as, which is a core operator that runs as part of OpenShift, and uh, that's where you have like uh, all the config changes that you can, you want to do on the OS, you can do that. And uh, it takes care of your OpenShift uh, uh, or core OS, uh, I mean, real core OS update as well automatically. Um, so a little bit more about MCO. This is a core operator as we already talked, and uh, here it performs, it helps in performing the OS update. Like when you click, uh, like, okay, in, in your probably console, or when you say OCATM upgrade, uh, everything upgrades. Along with that, um, your MCO that takes care of up upgrading your operating system itself from whatever version it was before to the next version, and uh, any other changes that, that are part, part that should go to the OS. And uh, from where it get exactly the content of the OS. So, so if you know, like OpenShift sh ships everything uh, in a in a single everything in the image, which is image format and the container image. And uh, uh, similarly, the op the real core OS as well is a form of container image, and uh, that's how we ship. And there are some extensions uh, which is like uh, not part of the core core OS. Uh, core itself, but uh, you can basically install some of them. Um, and we sh they all come together in the release payload that is part of the OpenShift release of any particular version. Um, OK, so why we are having this talk? Uh, so this talk is related to this limitation. So with all those design, everything works well. Like you can configure your machine with uh, changes that you want on the node, and you can have really uh, update and everything working well. It works well for most of the people, but for some, some people, it doesn't work. Like what if I want to have a custom agent or a, uh, or a third party, like uh, which is not really part of the base core OS. I mean, we are, how exactly can get it? And that's not something we support today, right? And uh, it's very difficult, and that's why some of some of some of the I mean, enablement cannot be done uh, because it's not available yet. 
and, uh, and the next is uh, re additional rel packages. So rel has a lot of packages, but not everything is, pa is part of your uh, core, core operating, operating system. So for example, USB card or uh, for uh, Libres one or anything, they're not part of your uh, base operating system. So if you want that on node, I mean, definitely the idea is to containerize things, use, uh, make container and then use it. But not everything can be containerized, and that's why sometimes people want it to like have it uh, directly installed in the in the base OS. And uh, it's a long process if you want to do really in rel uh, getting uh, an additional package. For example, we have USB guard, and that's where extensions come into picture. And uh, and to get that, you have to we have a lot of conversation like uh, should it be part of the base OS? Uh, because every every additional package just increases the uh, size of the OS and uh, that basically increases it, right? So that's why we have to be mindful, careful, and we have to test it, support it, everything. So it, it's like long process. If we and it's not necessary, it will get into it. So it has to be like okay, very much like um, reason, reasonable to to make the use case. And the third one is the performing hot fixes. For example, you have a you have a new kernel and. Uh, uh, now it's security fixes, and uh, you want to apply it on your cluster. And uh, for that, um, you cannot go and uh, really get it unless uh, Red Hat ships a new new update, right? And uh, new, there is a new release, and then you have to go through that. Then only uh, update will happen. So everything will take time for this kind of situation. So these things like uh, happens, but it takes a little bit time. Also, you need to know like what is machine config. That's, but that's basically on which uh, we, I mean, MCO are based on. Um, so yeah. Uh, so these are the things uh, that basically lead to uh, lead to what uh, we wanted to do, which is called chorus layering. Um, so chorus layering probably overheard in other talks in the DevConf before as well. So here we are focusing more about OCP chorus layering, like how we are leveraging uh, layering in chorus uh, in OpenShift. Uh, so, so the layering, it's uh, OCP chorus layering. Uh, this is basically based on layering technology where the whole ARCOS uh, system uh, basically has a root file system in a standard OCI container image. So you might be wondering like what exactly is uh, a standard OCI container image. Earlier also I was telling that uh, we are shipping um, the core OS in container image. But there is a little bit different in like standard, standardizing it is as standard OCI container image than what we used to ship before. I will, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so basically using this OCI standard, uh, we can basically use any standard tooling uh, in the, in the, for, for managing this image. Um, that's where bootable container comes into picture. So uh, basically with this uh, OCI container image uh, that we have now that we ship, uh, you can basically use any container technology tools uh, that's available to build and uh, layer anything on top of it. Uh, and uh, it, it works as a delivery transport mechanism for, for the updates. Uh, like uh, we use, like we use RP Moistry update, uh, you say, and the, this new image that we ship and uh, it will take automatically uh, care of everything and the, your system will be updated to the, to the latest version of uh, whatever is in the payload. And, um, and this takes care of also all the image content source policy. Uh, like probably you know in OpenShift, like some people use mirroring, so they have, uh, uh, they have uh, all those defined in the uh, registry account. So, uh, so, so this will take care of all those things as well. And uh, everything is expected uh, in this new, new format too. Um, so yeah, uh, so here is the comparison between how exactly the OS image content was before and now. So before, uh, like when I say before, it was like before 4.12 when we started OpenShift 4 until 4.12. And that's where in 4.12 we basically implemented the chorus layering in the OpenShift. And uh, when you see, uh, so the, it used to be called machine OS content. Uh, the the image that we ship in the release payload for the OS and uh, if you so for example you cannot run it uh, like I have uh, I can show you uh, machine OS content so this is basically a, um, a image uh, uh, which is basically that we have for 4.13 and if I say 
Podman run. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same one, so I will just cancel it. Yeah, so it's not really executable. You cannot go run or do any additional activity. It's not really fun here. Uh, so how we exactly used to do OS update before was um, we used to extract that uh, image. And uh, uh, so if you see, all these are the content of that image. and. Uh, uh, there is a SRV and the repo. So this is where OS3 contents are there. And uh, what we used to do is we extract the content and we used to do RPM to rebase and uh, it used to take the, take the information from here and uh, used to update that. So it was not really a nice like uh, um, fully integrated update system. Uh, with the new format, um, we have, uh, this is rel core OS. This is available in from 4.12 uh, onward. And, uh, here you will see there is like, uh, this is very native to OCI container image and uh, we have actually a kernel here in, in the user lib, uh, user lib modules. Uh, if we go, we, we can check it later um, here. And uh, it's, it's very native to that and you can do lots of thing here. Um, yeah. So how exactly it works? Uh, so since this is a very standard OCI container image, you can basically use the, you can create a container file or Docker file, however you say it. And uh, yes, you can uh, layer additional packages or uh, additional file or anything you want. So it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's whatever you want to do here. So nothing is like, uh, mm, limitation here. Um, so for example, uh, this is something uh, like use case for us uh, here. For, uh, as I was talking about hotfix, uh, so suppose the new, new security update has come and uh, new build is not yet available, but uh, suppose you got the fix or it's still in the central stream, which comes before coming, coming into the uh, I mean rel. So you can try out and test those so by like, uh, for example, here I have a so this is what from and uh, and this is uh, uh, this is basically the sha of um, the image and uh, this command basically we need to use for uh, kernel uh, override uh, but usually we don't need it we just need to do rpm mystery over uh, install and other for here we override because we want to do hotfix from the central stream uh, so this is uh, yeah the f this is the simple container file nothing fancy uh, which is good, we don't need fancy everywhere. And uh, for demo, I will just show up what we were seeing here. Um, uh, so I have a cluster, uh, this is running on GCP, and uh, I will show how exactly we apply those changes uh, in the layering model. Um, for example, I will oh, see it, uh, let me see, cluster version. Cluster version. Uh, so I have for the 13 uh, cluster and I will, so this is ex basically I'm fetching uh, this command OC ADM really, can you see? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this OC ADM release info and uh, this is the, Im the image name, LOS tag. So this will give me basically what exactly the image URL is uh, that I have that I need to use for uh, for the for the I mean from where basically your base image will start and uh, and yeah so now so I'm not typing it here because uh, it will be definitely time taking and so I have everything here ready um, yeah so this is the from uh, I will I just copied from there. So this is the same, you can see uh, I'm using this for as a base image. And uh, we saw earlier in the, in the do documentation, in the presentation, so that's where run RPM accelerator app. So this is we're using for the override stuff. And I'm also layering here uh, another package, uh, which is from central stream, and this is IOTOP. So the, we are doing two operation here, um, override and hotfix uh, of existing base OS. Things. So you can do more things, but for this demo, I'm just doing this. And what you need to do, just using uh, I mean regular container tooling, you basically build an image, and uh, I will do it. Um, uh, Podman build, 
and uh, it won't take time because uh, I'm using the cached version, I have it locally. And uh, once you have built it, you, you need to push it to a registry. Uh, it can be anywhere, however you want. And uh, for me, it's, uh, yeah, it's my, my personal query.io SQMari user where I have. And uh, yeah, so remember, this is where we push it, uh, the, this container. And uh, so what we do here, uh, right now, I will just go and uh, apply this uh, into my cluster. But uh, in for, for the use case where exactly where it is used, you basically, there is a lot of things you can do. You can like uh, do into the CI CD. I mean, you can run some tests there and uh, do all those stuff. And then after that, basically, you can go and uh, um, and uh, apply to the cluster. So a lot of potential here to do the testing based on the use cases. And now I will, so basically how exactly you apply to the cluster. So basically you have to create a machine config. Uh, and this is how it looks like. Uh, so this is the, um, this is a CID for machine configuration where, and here we are basically overriding the OS image URL. And uh, this is the URL, uh, this is the URL with the SHA. So we don't take tag basically. The reason of not taking tag is uh, it can change and uh, uh, we don't want to deviate and that's why we use SHA instead of tag. And uh, you can get the tag by just saying uh, Scopio inspect. Um, yeah, and what was the image name? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this was the wrong, uh, one moment, just a second. So this was the base image and I will say Scopio inspect and is there something missing? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 you're right, absolutely, thank you. We need to define this. So yeah, usually it uh, show up it will take some time because of the internet. And so basically we'll have the shy information um, in this here. Um, anyway, I, I was actually looking at wrong place. Um, I should look at the create out IO, uh, not, the, not the other way around. Scopio inspect, I should have somewhere. Yes. So yeah, we don't need to inspect the original image. We need to inspect the image that we created. Uh, so we need the SHA for this. And uh, this, this was the format. So I'm just showing how exactly we need to use. And yes. So this was the, this is how we generate this image uh, URL. and. Uh, now what I will do, I will apply to the cluster. And uh, to apply it, you just say OC create and yeah. So and uh, probably if you know, I don't know, I'm not sure, but uh, this is how basically it applies to, it uses MCO, a machine config operator. That's where you basically monitor the change. And uh, a new config gets rendered here. So this is OS image override, and it was generated six seconds, and this is new render. I was applied for just worker. Um, uh, if you've seen that, so this is basically applied to the role where they all are in worker pool. So it won't apply to other pools, so um, it's, it's pool specific. And, and one interesting thing, um, so, Oh, sorry. Yes. So here, this is the uh, now node is uh, scheduling disabled because when we do that, we cordon the node and uh, drain operation starts, and then we apply the changes. Uh, so the interesting thing I wanted to show was um, OC get node hyphen white. Um, it's very weird because we have to increase the size. But the interesting thing is the kernel version, where is it? Here. So we have 5.14.0.24 kernel version. And we just created a new image with the CentOS uh, stream. And uh, that was 
let, let's check a container file. So this was basically 5.14.0.325. So we should have uh, basically once the node is updated, uh, we should be seeing 5.4.0.325 uh, uh, version. It will take some time uh, uh, and we can just, uh, let me check, get pod, um, or see get pods hyphen o white. So this will show me all the all the all the pods that are running in the MCO namespace, and uh, I w I'm interested in this one uh, because this is where my this is where update is happening. So in MCO, we by default it will apply to one node. Uh, this is because for safety. All right. Um, Okay, so let's let's give it some time, and meanwhile, what we'll do is we go and inspect the image that we we have. Um, so, uh, cat container file. Uh, this is the image, and I will run. Podman run. It rm. Yeah. So here we can see rpm hyphen qa and uh, kernel and uh, iotop okay so you have 55 five, it's 514 and um, this is the there is no iotop um, here installed because this is the base the base version uh, if i remove i think it will be here yes so you can see there's no iotop in my base image that was coming from base arcos um, and uh, now I will check for the check here. Oh, see, sorry, uh, Podman run hyphen it. Um, I feel hyphen q kernel iotop. So, yeah, you can see here we have the latest uh, image uh, kernel that we. Uh, that we got from the CentOS and we built through the image and the iotop. So we can basically go inside the container that we created through this uh, standard OCI container image that we have now and that's how it works. And we can, let, let me see if we were able to get, um, uh, yes. So you can see this node has now actually 514.325. So this got applied, the custom image that we created, it got applied to this node and similarly it will happen on the rest of the node. Uh, so this was our demo. And uh, so where we are exactly with this whole uh, new layering model. So with, like we said earlier in OpenShift 4.12, we basically have this new format of image uh, for our course and uh, MCO knows how to understand it and uh, apply it. And in 4.12, we basically support the hotfix model uh, where we, you can apply a hotfix and through the customer portal and all those stuff. And, uh, off cluster build uh, basically went GA in 4.13. And what is off cluster build? I will tell you here. Uh, off cluster build is basically what we just saw, uh, saw here like you create a Docker file and uh, uh, you, you do on, on changes that you want. And uh, basically, you take the control of the of the whole cluster and the OS update mainly, not the and uh, and you whenever a new update happens uh, from the OpenShift, like you, and the OS will not be updated. It will be it will be done when the when the user admin admin does it and creates the creates the new OS uh, OS image and uh, with the new new changes and uh, that's how it done. So MCO basically won't be making any making any OS update uh, when there is an overwrite. And you can go back uh, by basically deleting that machine config that we created, and uh, uh, things will go back, reset to the default mode. And the, from there on onward, uh, open, uh, the MCO will take care of the applying of the OS update as well. And yeah. 
So from all these things to remember uh, is like uh, with this new model of, of cluster build and the, the using the bootable container for OS update, uh, machine config is not deprecated. So the way it works, it will continue working and uh, off cluster build admins takes a control and uh, they are responsible for doing the OS update uh, by themselves by creating their own image whenever a new update happens or whenever they want to do it. And, uh, for accessing rel packages. For example, when you do pull in a package that is like part of rel, uh, you need to build this on an entire host so that uh, you can fetch those uh, content which is from rel. And uh, yep. and uh, RT kernel and uh, extension, those are not yet supported uh, because they conflict the way it's designed in the open shift of doing the RT kernel, applying the RT kernel or extensions. Uh, they are they are conflicting with the current model, so we need to work on that. Um, yeah. So what's next? Uh, next is in cluster build. So off cluster build is there, but uh, not everyone wants to really take the control of building by themselves and maintaining the OS updates. So uh, we are working on in cluster build, where where user can basically define what they want to give, and uh, MCO will. Uh, create a new build, apply it, and give it uh, and put it in the registry, and everything will be like a battery included kind of model that we say, and uh, uh, better integration with the console uh, so that uh, it has a good user experience. Right now, you have to do it by yourself, and uh, hopefully, with uh, with the OC integration, we will have a little better and uh, feedback. Uh, so right now, this is very new. We are now for 13 and for 12, it came up. So uh, more feedback we are looking for after the users are trying out and uh, see how exactly it looks like uh, after the after the after the try, so that we can improve it where exactly we need to improve. And also, yes, uh, the RT kernel that is missing, we want to really make it uh, in supported way so that user can. There are a lot of people who want to use uses actually RT kernel, so this is something we'd like to uh, support and uh, give a better way forward for this. Uh, yes, so this was my talk, and these are some of the resources that we used. Some of the upstream links are also there, uh, which which you can try out and see if you don't have an OCP cluster. And yes, thanks. And uh, shout out to Colin, uh, Colin Walter, because he we were trying going to give the talk together, but uh, he couldn't come up. So uh, yes, uh, I um, yeah, thanks to Colin as well for helping with this presentation. And uh, thank you all. So if you have any question, feel free to ask. Yes? Uh, yes, the question is, uh, with, uh, can I use uh, any other commands, add or something that's supported by, uh, by the container file, right? So yes, you can do that. Um, so can you use uh, multiple? Yeah, can you do multiple uh, layers, right? So if I do a machine config, you are going to use a URL, and then I do another one, does it override, like does it read the other one? Okay. The uh, so the question is, if I have multiple machine config with OS image URL override, will it conflict or uh, what will happen? So the way MCO work is, uh, it, it takes the, uh, a, there is a particular ordering. So if you have multiple machine config, one of them will supersede. Uh, so the latest will be taken. taken. So uh, like alphanumeric, the way system D handles the name, name ordering, uh, similar to that, we use that uh, pattern. So during the new rendering process, it will basically pick the latest one. Uh, latest one in the sense that uh, you have a name of the uh, machine config, right? So uh, the name matters. So whatever name is the latest, uh, the way MCO handles, so whoever is the latest one, that will basically be picked up. Yeah, no problem. Any more question? Yes. Uh, 
Um, uh, sorry, I, I couldn't hear the question. Can someone repeat? How, how does OS3 handles uh, container image updates? So that's the question. Uh, that's a very good question, and uh, I think uh, I am not the right person uh, because uh, the CoreOS team works on that. Uh, so I think uh, that will be a good question for some of the people uh, who worked on it. So yeah. So internally, Internally, it, it, yeah, it's 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 a new new way of using it. So it, it, there are definitely technical details here. So that I'm not aware of, of it. That that was uh, before 4.12. That's how we were doing with with new with for after 4.12. Uh, the native container image, the way so RPM OS3 handles itself. Now we just uh, in during update we just say RPM OS3 um, update and uh, the URL of the registry, image registry, and uh, OS3 in behind takes care of uh, doing the update. Yes? Um, so how do you give a new OS, uh, custom OS image? Uh, that's the question. Um, uh, so, um, so the way we handle it, so you basically use the OC ADM command, OC ADM release info, and uh, here, I'm, here I'm just, I'm using the existing cluster, but there is also a way to provide the actual URL uh, from where basically it's coming, uh, the whole OpenShift update. And uh, you can basically, this is my, uh, I can just say rel core OS uh, tag. So you, you have all the, all, the, all the image information there for a particular release. So suppose you want to go from 4.12 to 4.13. So you basically use that uh, release payload that's available for 4.13 and uh, you give it to OCADM and uh, you should have the URL for OS and use that. Does this answer the question? Okay. Uh, we have three more qu uh, minutes, so if, yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so we did hit some some issues, um, but yes, we do handle it. Uh, so and it happens because during scale up, what happens? The cluster that are from born from 4.1 or 4.2, they are very old, and we still do not update basically boot image. So they boot up from 4.1, and then we update it. So that's how it works. Uh, so it works, and it, there is a workaround actually. Uh, because we don't have the new RPM strict capabilities, so uh, there is another system rerun uh, and invocation we do, and uh, we apply the update uh, update of the new OS image. So it works, uh, but there is a workaround there. So uh, all the codes are in MCO, uh, so um, I can point to you later if you are more interested into how it works. No problem. Um, any more question? Um, since not, so thank you all for coming.